Thank you very much, uh, William, and uh, good morning to uh, all uh, esteemed participants. I see many uh, faces that are very familiar uh, to the work of SCAT. So I hope uh, that you see my first page of uh, my presentation. Um, actually, my presentation is about uh, the central role of uh, resolution uh, MSC 473, as been mentioned uh, by the Secretary General. Uh, and the work of the uh, CFAR Crisis Action Team, the SCAT. As we are uh, aware, uh, over 400,000 CFARs uh, are currently on board ships um, and have been affected worldwide by the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. Travel restrictions, uh, supports, airports and inland mean that thousands of CFARs cannot leave their ships, be repatriated home, have crew changes, or in some senses, get urgent medical care. So many seafarers see that their contracts are unilaterally terminated uh, or have been quarantined on board ships or on shore, often for more than 14 days without getting paid. And furthermore, COVID-19 related abandonment cases have increased dramatically over this year. So further exacerbating the crew change situation. And a similar number of seafarers, uh, SD 400,000 that are on board, are also uh, on shore actually waiting uh, to join the ships as part of crew chains and are unable to work. So the inability to change crews has resulted in a crisis, as was described, uh, as we just saw by the Secretary General, having three dimensions in humanitarian safety and economic impact. IMO, ILO, WHO, ICAO, ITF, ICS, IMHA are working tirelessly at all levels to find solutions for the crisis. Already from the start of the crisis, uh, IMO uh, was involved in actually uh, seeking a solution. You can see here one of the first uh, cases uh, for which a medical care was uh, actually requested in the Strait of Malacca. And with our diplomatic uh, connections with uh, Indonesia, we were able to uh, find a solution there. So about the role of IMO. Well, IMO's mission is to provide for secure, uh, safe and efficient shipping on clean oceans. Uh, apparently uh, more than 90% of global trade is carried out by ships. Ownership and management chain embrace uh, many countries. So ships spend economic lives between different jurisdictions often far from the state of registry, which uh, means that there is a real need to have international standards to regulate shipping otherwise shipping cannot be made efficient so the role of imo in this is actually as an organization to facilitate all the work uh, of 174 member states it is the only un agency headquartered in london a very relative small uh, budget 30 millions of pounds around 265 of staff members 50 nationalities are really represented in the staff. And actually the organization is duly uh, the work of all the 174 member states, uh, which all include uh, having an interest in maritime affairs. So from the outset, uh, when um, IMO became involved uh, in the work uh, relating to the uh, crew change crisis, um, IMO, uh, urged member states in protocols that actually were first being uh, designed by, by industry and the trade unions, uh, actually to uh, disseminate these protocols uh, to the member states that uh, they should designate seafarers as key workers, regardless of nationality, when in the jurisdiction providing an essential service. Also, uh, that uh, professional seafarers and marine personnel should be granted exemptions from national travel or movement restrictions. This is key uh, from the start and it is still key today. Uh, the Secretary General has supported uh, all this work in the protocols by means of circular letters in the 4204 series. And uh, when uh, resolution uh, MSC 473 was adopted uh, in the Alcom uh, meeting by the Maritime Safety Committee, it's uh, on the same footing recommended action to facilitate ship crew change, access to medical care and seafarer travel during the COVID-19 pandemic. It is crucial that seafarers are designated as, sea, as key workers and that actually there are no travel impediments. This whole has been formalized uh, in a first formal setting of MSC 102, 
by which a circular uh, 1636 was actually being issued uh, to formalize all the work uh, for this designation and for uh, granting no impediments to, to transport. Um, this work further led to the uh, adoption of the United General Assembly Resolution uh, on the 1st of uh, December, so uh, more than two weeks ago. And actually what is crucial also there is member states should designate seafarers and other marine personnel as key workers. Uh, SCAT has been involved in many effective diplomatic interventions. Uh, I show you some uh, yeah, effects of the pandemic uh, relating to seafarers that had to be disembarked. This is all because we actually engaged with uh, governments to achieve. What I would like to uh, show, uh, and I have uh, only a few minutes left, is uh, actually where we are more or less uh, today. You see here uh, the achievements of uh, yeah, the effects of the protocols and the resolution. You see that in uh, Africa still uh, the uh, successful uh, crew changes are not outweighing the unsuccessful ones. Uh, and that's quite opposite what we see happening in Asia, in Europe, uh, uh, but in the Middle East, it's more balanced. So uh, there is hope that there is an increase of uh, crew changes taking place. And uh, from this positive side, we also have to be realistic that because there are about 700, 800,000 seafarers uh, we still need to be uh, facilitated in the cultures. This number is still increasing. And you see that also uh, there is an increase of the successful uh, repatriations and, and crew change that still uh, is uh, not at the same level as what is needed. So there's further work uh, to be done. Um, so still very critical. Uh, besides the actions are needed, we are encouraged by the process made uh, by many countries to designate CFRs as key workers and to facilitate the negotiations. But we are also very concerned about in many countries where restrictions are still in place for CFRs. Uh, as the Secretary General stated, we are on the verge of a humanitarian crisis. And there is also because of the long um, stay of CFRs on board ships, a real safety issue at stake. Uh, and we cannot expect seafarers currently on ship to stay on sea forever. So many seafarers have already been for longer than 11 months, as we've been repeat, so I, uh, by ILO, and this is yeah, becoming quite uh, an alarming figure. Uh, and it remains the responsibility of governments to ensure that seafarers and ships can continue moving and to enable the world to overcome and recover from the pandemic and keep the global economy afloat. So we still work also through the seafarer crisis action team. We work around the clock uh, still also this week. We still see a uh, request that we need to uh, get the seafarers in contact with national governments, NGOs, trade unions, uh, relevant associations, uh, and actually to get them uh, to find a proper uh, solution. So this is actually, uh, yeah, in a nutshell, our work. Seafarers can directly contact uh, the SCATI by emailing to uh, our info uh, address on, uh, yeah, uh, which is also on the website of IMO and is generally available. I think I leave it with that and questions of course can be uh, asked later on.